I'm good. How you doing? It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, man, man. Likewise. Likewise. Oh, uh, man. Um, start from the top, man. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. I got some very, uh, I don't know, riveting questions, some personal questions. And uh, uh -huh. we'll just get right to it. But go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's Basque. You know what I'm saying? Harlem Zone. Donald Goins a rap. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a little bit right there. You know what I mean? Uh, doing this music thing for a long time. You know, uh, I come from a music family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I have, that inspired me first to even start this uh, thing we call hip hop. You know? What well, um, what part of Harlem are you from? From the West Side, 33rd, 133rd Amsterdam, Manhattanville Project. Okay, Manhattanville. My um, my recollection of Bathgate was I was doing time when you came out. And mm -hmm. I remember what I noticed about you uh, was you popped up on, I, I believe, uh, Rap City. And I just didn't, you were somebody who was in the rotation that we didn't know. And I say that because, and at the same time that we watching all these videos every day in jail, we listening to the radio and we, we get in the magazines, we get in the publications and shit. And you right. just, um, appeared in, 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 in a rotation, in a major rotation. And it, it seemed like you didn't, um, you know, when you, back then a lot of people came in the game and they had affiliations with people like almost right. yeah almost visible uh affiliations you might have seen someone in a video with them or just some type of affiliation and it just seemed like you just appeared out of nowhere and you was by yourself that was my perception of you is that anything anywhere near the truth yeah i i'll say that somewhat yeah i think that was somewhat near the truth i mean um, i mean i didn't really have like a major cosign, like most you know, most rappers, especially in my time that came that came up with me, kind of had some sort of cosign at that moment. Um, at the time, my managers, um, well, my manager introduced me to uh, G. Robeson, who was a uh, part of Rockefeller. So, you know, when when G had interest in me, it was. Uh, that's when I started to, to be around, you know, the Rockefeller dudes. Just, just, just like, you know, nothing really too big, like a fly on the wall, just in the cut, just, you know, uh, absorbing things, you know, from the background, you know, and being around, you know, B B Bleak and Jay and Dame and, you know, Biggs and just being around hip-hop and, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I wouldn't say, I, I, didn't, I didn't come in with that same, you know, like co-sign that other rappers did. So I kind of came in kind of dolo. I would say that, yeah. I would say that, you know. It was like you was thrown in the shark infested water. Basically, mm -hmm. I say that I say that because I'm watching um the videos that was out at the time. Like you was it was some heavy niggas out when you came out. Yeah. Some heavy heavy dudes was out when you came out. I believe like you came out around with Nori and then was was still out on TV and shit, right? Right, right. It was, uh, Queens was a big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the diplomats hadn't popped off like that yet. Um, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and in, in my opinion, um, Harlem's whole hip hop identity might have, might not have been all the way established at the time. You just, uh, appeared out of nowhere and and sh I, I felt it was like shark infested water not that you couldn't rap you could rap you could rap and um you said that you was you know you kind of was like around the rockefeller thing you had a you had a little bit of hove little hove flow in there at, at times um I, i'll give you your roses um yeah, you definitely could rhyme, but uh, tell me a little bit more about your journey to becoming an M a MC, and I hope I'm not offending you, because no, no, I, 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 I'm a student of this shit, man, and, and, and it, just as soon as you appeared, you disappeared. So, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. Well, see, like, commercially, I, it might have seemed like I came out of nowhere, but I had started buzzing in the, street, the streets of Harlem, 
you know what I'm saying, some just, you know, just the underground circuits and just going to different blocks and, and, and rhyming and different ciphers and being connected to different people that I knew, you know what I'm saying, that I was doing a thing in Harlem, you know what I'm saying, uh, like uh, like my brother Fats, my brother Fats put me on Ron G tape, so that kind of like started my buzz back then, you know what I'm saying, in the streets of Harlem, and, and besides that, I was, you know, I was getting that name and somebody that, that got busy, you know what I'm saying, because, you know what I mean, I was going to these blocks, you know, ciphers, you know, it was more like ciphers than, than it were battles, you know what I'm saying, in that time, it, it wasn't like scheduled, Okay, you know okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, B. Um, now, during this during this era that you, you're making this name, you're going block to block, whose generation of you are? Uh, are you of Mace, Cardan, uh, McGruff, like who, who Loaded Lux, yes. Mook, like who, who's like, heir? Stan Spit, who's heir? Yeah, I would say uh, definitely Cardan. Uh, Mace was already like already buzzing um i came like behind that bass and gruff were kind of like already buzzing you know what i'm saying so i kind of came like probably at the end of the like not the end but like had they already stepped in and got they, they feet wet i kind of came like behind that a little later like you know what i'm saying i would say about nine nine i was really starting to get you know hot as far as like the underground in the street you know what i'm saying like i would say because you gotta think man in 2000 2001 uh, it was me, Fab, 50 Cent, J.D. Kiss, because that's when he was, you know, pushing his solo um, projects. So I was I was definitely in a mix of a lot of, you know what I'm saying, um, heavy hitters. That's shark, that's, uh, that's shark water. Yeah, yeah, that's shark water. You know what I'm saying? So, and I, and I, and I, and I know I held my own, you know what I'm saying? Definitely, I know I held my own. You know, I was, um, I was always outside. You know what I'm saying? At this time, I don't even think, I, don't, I think 9-9, nine, nine, I even, I think I got signed towards the end of 9-9. Nine, nine. You know what I'm saying? So before that, I was still, you know, on my block. You know what I mean? Just doing what I do. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, like, I was just moving and grooving, like, locally. You know what I'm saying? But I started picking up buzz after that Ron G tape and um, SNS. And then I started doing, uh, Damn, I know SNS, I mean DJ Prez, you know what I'm saying? It was like cats that was from Harlem. Right. I was getting heavy in that mixtape circuit and I started I started touching that and that then my buzz started to pick up. And my manager had already was uh was already rocking with Jewels. Jewels was in a rap group at the time called the Draft Picks. Okay. And um he got them signed, I think to priority. And I was going around after that because I, I went to school with uh I went to school with uh Joel's cousin and his man Malik Joel's cousin D Train rest in peace to D Train I went to high school with them so that's how I met um Joel's after that and um once they introduced me to God O their, their manager uh, John. He had brought me to G, and then the rest was like history. Like you know, G started putting me in a position to uh, really get in front of the execs and stuff like that. See, back in that day, you didn't really like you. You had to perform your demo. You know what I'm saying? So it was like you would play music, but you was also like performing at those meetings. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's it wasn't there was no internet. There was no put a song out and it pick up buzz or go fly it was none of that it was really like you said shark infested waters and i still had to deal with the heavy hitters that was on the mixtapes like fabulous and the desert storm movement and joe buttons right and all those niggas, you, know what I'm you saying? definitely was on there you definitely was on there i was i was gonna get to all of that you definitely was on it answer this for me um your your flow your style and your image was you on your smooth shit This is like something that we we you know we did like it was like that was like regular shit it was like, right you know what i'm saying so it was about being smooth and you know f you know fucking with the ladies and and but having that slick talk it, you know what i'm saying when, you right know, it was all about you know that slick talk that slickness that flash shit, you know what i mean i remember um the mix i remember i remember the mixtape era and i remember like Whenever you would get on your smooth shit, you wasn't the only one. Fab would do it sometimes. Yes. 
they would fuck up the flow of the mixtape, man. Y'all have y'all would really have to be talking some slick shit at that time, man. With <laughs> with all those with all those gun bars and shit out <laughs> straight right, right. up. Um the comparisons. Did you get any comparisons? Did people say, you know, he he reminds me of this or he sounds like this? Yeah, towards, towards like towards more the commercial part of my of my start of my career. 